Welcome to Education, Career, and Beyond podcast. We've combined life experience with young adult drive and ambition. Are you just starting to college plan? Did you finish your education and wonder, now what? Join us in this lively discussion about the topics you need to know to create the next stage of your life's dreams, careers, finances, education, and more. Brought to you by Voice for Heroes 501c3. Welcome to another great episode of the Education, Career, and Beyond podcast. As you just heard in the intro, that we are all about bringing incredible resources to our young adults through this entire crazy journey, starting with thinking about college, getting through college, and beyond. And so we have Capri Suarez, our regular host with us. Our special guest, McKenna Hirsch. And if you follow this show, she was a guest about a month ago. We just love McKenna because our wonderful Ed is out on vacation, very deservingly on vacation. But with no further ado, I want to introduce our amazing guest who volunteered to be a part of this show and bring his expertise today is Dr. William Attaway. He is an expert in leadership, works with young adults, a lot of great techniques that he has that he has in his book. We're going to hear about that and how he really advises taking a look at leadership in a whole new way. Dr. Attaway, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me, Amy. It's really an honor to be here. Well, this is a fun show and we love that we bring really valuable advice. So just relax into this because the girls are going to rapid fire you a little bit. I'm here to steer, mm -hmm. but no formalities here. Just really good insight that we know that they need. So why don't you start off and just tell us a little bit about your background, kind of give us that cliff note to lead us where we are here today and why we can pick your brain. Sure. I've been leading in the uh, nonprofit space for over 26 years now. I've been leading in the business world for almost 30 years and started my own company uh, almost six years ago. Uh, I am married now for 25 years. I have two daughters, one who is a freshman in college this year. Ah, oh, where is she? <laughs> she is at Regent University in Virginia Beach. Nice. Yeah, so that's uh, not quite San Diego, but still Virginia <laughs> Beach. So, you know, that's, that's not so bad. <laughs> And well, these girls left San Diego to go to Purdue, which I still can't figure out, but I know they love it. <laughs> and what about your other, what about your other offspring? <laughs> My younger daughter, she is a sophomore in high school and already got her eyes on college. We're looking at okay. some early college classes for her starting in the fall. So you're so, already walking through this process again. It's powerful. Make sure they follow this show because we have such good content in every episode from last season and this season that could probably help them as we really have had some great discussions, right, girls, about essay writing, how to really attack those college apps, oh, community excellent. service, all the stuff that really can help have you that upper edge. So make sure you, you follow anybody watching or listening to this, go back and check out those episodes. But I'm gonna stop talking now. Dr. William, thank you so much for being with us like this and being able to bring your expertise girls. I'm going to let you throw some questions at him. Um, do you want to give us a little Arknos version about what your maybe leadership theology is, or if that's too big of a chunk to start off with how you kind of got into the realm about learning about leadership. And I think you said earlier being a student of leadership. Absolutely. Capri, it started when I was 15 years old. Uh, I was wow. invited to attend my first leadership conference. Mm -hmm. It was a high school teacher who saw something in me that I did not see in myself. Uh, and he said, I really think you would benefit from this and, and learn a lot. So I hopped on a plane, went to a leadership conference oh, wow. you know, three, four states away uh, and was hooked. Uh, I have been a student of leadership now for going on four decades uh, because of what happened in that experience in that conference because somebody saw something in me, called it out and invested it. So if I'm going to encapsulate what leadership means to me, it's about exactly that. It's about seeing what could be in other people and helping to lift them and empower them into what could be based on how they are wired and what is in their hearts and minds to do. That's great. Do you see that there's a lot of leadership being taught in today's education, especially in at a high school level and early college? Is this a topic that's becoming more common or are you noticing that it's still not addressed as much as it should and it's kind of on the back burner? You know, I think it's definitely talked about more than it used to be. Uh, you know, back in the 80s and 90s, leadership was not talked about nearly as much as no. management was. <laughs> Management was everywhere. <laughs> Leadership, not so much. So it's definitely talked about more than it was. Is it talked about enough? Is it talked about in the right ways? Is it talked about in ways that are actually going to help people to see 
the best side of leadership, what we get to do, not what we have to do. And there's a world of difference in those two things. Uh, you know, what leaders get to do, again, is to, to invest in and empower other people, to, to rally them together to accomplish something bigger than themselves. That's what we get to do. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think that's talked about enough. And that's one thing that, that I am consistent on. I really want people to understand that the, the, the power of a leader, a great leader, is in seeing what could be in the people that they get to lead, that they get to lead, uh, not that they have to lead. And helping them to lean in and move toward the best version of themselves to accomplish something that's that's far bigger than their world. Mm -hmm. That's great. I really liked how question, you mentioned. Right yeah. um, I really liked how you mentioned like empowering others and mm -hmm. kind of like leadership um, is something that you really get to like choose and pursue. And um, as someone who's been, I guess, it's, it's exploring um, leadership for a while and really investing in it. What is um, something that you would advise um, college students or even just um, younger adults um, who are trying to figure out where their leadership journey is and like potentially starting their leadership journey? What advice do you think you would give them? You know, I would tell them the I, I would emphasize the importance of what I call the one non-negotiable of catalytic leadership, which is the intentional cultivation of a teachable spirit. If you only hear one thing today, I hope you hear that you get to choose whether you will have and cultivate a teachable spirit in your life. Nobody else chooses that for you. No one else can choose it for you. And it costs you nothing. But it's a decision you have to make every day. I want to choose to be the most teachable person in every conversation I'm in, in every room I'm in, in every meeting I'm in, every situation, every circumstance. I want to be the most teachable person because I believe there's no such thing as a wasted experience. Right. I can learn something from anyone, any experience, any situation. Sometimes I might learn what not to do, but that can be incredibly valuable if I have a teachable spirit. So for me, that's it. That's the one thing. Like if you hear that, if you choose that, then you will be a perpetual student in every circumstance, no matter where you go. My One of my favorite mentors that I have had the beautiful opportunity of working with for the last couple of years always teaches to be more interested than interesting. And yes. I think that's right on point with what you're saying right there is even yeah. in any situation that I'm more interested in what I can learn from this, what I can learn from you, what I can learn from this experience, good or bad, versus yeah. trying to say, here, look at me, I'm interesting. And I think you're right. That's a big strength of showing true leadership is almost the humility in that. Yes, exactly. If you lead out with that humility, with that teachable spirit, not only will you be a student perpetually, not only will you benefit from that, but you will set yourself apart from so many of your peers because that's not normal. Yeah. A lot of what you were just describing sounded a lot like me, to, or a lot like servant leadership to me. Um, would you kind of mind kind of going more into different leadership styles that you teach or know about or that you think is important kind of anywhere about those absolutely I, servant leadership the reason it sounds like servant leadership is because that's what i teach <laughs> i don't think there's any other kind uh, I'm, I'm with patrick lencioni on this one we talk about it like there are other kinds of leadership i'm not sure that's true uh, i think real authentic leadership is servant leadership. We should call other things other things. Uh, servant leadership is, is bearing in mind that we are there to serve those we lead. We are to be others centered in our approach. Uh, you asked earlier about my theology of leadership. Uh, my theology around servant leadership goes back to Jesus, actually. And I know this is not a church centered podcast, but, but I'll say that, that that is the source of that for me because that's what he taught. He said, you know, the, 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 the leaders of this world lord their authority over the people that they lead. And he looked at his followers and he said, not so with you. You're to be different. That's the beginning of servant leadership. That's where it started. And I believe that is real authentic leadership. 
when we exhibit that, when we help people understand that as we lead them, we don't see them just as cogs in a machine or a means to an end or, hey, you're just here to get stuff done that I don't want to do. Mm. When we help them understand that we are for them, that we want to encourage and empower them and invest in them so that they can grow and thrive in their lives and in their careers, that's a different ballgame. That's what real servant leadership leads to. If you don't mind for a moment, I'd love to discuss the misconception when we're looking at leadership or even young adults looking at leadership saying, but that's only for extroverts. I'm an introvert, so how could I ever be a leader? What do you advise to those different personality types on how they can still embrace and become a leader regardless of whether they're more a shy personality, introvert personality? I would say this, if you look at my Myers-Briggs profile, you would find that I could not be more on the introverted side of that chart. I am all the way on the introvert side. We have this idea that that means that if you're an introvert, you really don't like people. Mm -hmm. Well, nothing could be farther from the truth. It just means I have to budget my time and my energy in such a way that I can recharge when I'm with other people. That's not what, what, what recharges my batteries, right? I, I'm, that's when I'm going to be giving more. So time by myself, time for reflection, time for study, time for, for thinking, that's my recharge time. I've just got to budget my life in such a way that I'm able to recharge more. So if anybody thinks I'm an introvert, I can't lead, I would beg to differ because I've been doing it for over three decades. You absolutely can. It's important to understand how you're wired. It's important to understand how you're gifted, how you're skilled, and to lead from that place. I think so often, particularly with, with young emerging leaders, we begin, and I started this way, we begin by copying leaders that we admire, either that we've like worked for or people that we admire from afar. That's normal. The problem is if we stay there, if we stay there, we end up just becoming a bad copy of a great leader. I want you to learn your own wiring so you can lead from an authentic place, a place that is authentically you, how you are wired. When you do that, then you learn that being an introvert is a great strength, just like being an extrovert is a great strength. You just have to learn to lead from that place. Do you have any? any oh, you can go, go ahead. ahead. <laughs> Thank you. Do you have any advice on staying authentic to yourself when your leadership is being challenged? Because I feel like a lot of times people are like, oh, yeah, like I can be true to myself when I'm in this scenario, but then maybe the scenario changes or like, you get put in a tougher situation and it kind of is a little more difficult to be be authentic to yourself while still leading others. That is such a great question. You know, under stress, so often we find what's really inside getting squeezed out of the tube of toothpaste, don't we? You know, and we can we can put on a facade sometimes, we can put on this this exterior that looks one way, but under stress and under pressure, what's really in there is what gets squeezed out. I think that's why the most important part of your leadership is how you lead yourself. You are the hardest person you will ever lead. I'm the hardest person I will ever lead. How we learn to lead ourselves is how we define what is inside the tube. That's when you do the hard work to develop yourself. Your personal growth, your personal development, there has to be a plan there. It's not, you're not just gonna wake up one day and say, oh, wow, I'm a fully developed leader with all the skills I need. I don't know how that happened, but here I am. Nobody does that. It never happens. You have to have a plan. Failing to plan is planning to fail. Mm -hmm. You have to have a plan, just like getting into college, right? When, when my older daughter was applying, like there was a plan. We had a whole plan laid out. My younger daughter started this process. We have a plan laid out. I'm a planner, I know. But like that's true in every part of our lives, including our leadership. If you want to be ready when you're under stress, when you're under pressure, because those days will come, those situations will come. If you want to be ready, you have to start planning for it now by developing yourself, investing in your own leadership and your own development and growth so that you will be ready. So that when the toothpaste tube does get squeezed, what comes out is going to be authentically you, not what you don't want. That's good advice. I noticed, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Advice. I, that was good. Um, that was good. 
I noticed you're talking a little bit about personal leadership and then as well as professional leadership. Mm -hmm. um, so do you mind just like touching on that and kind of like the differences between the two and how you might necessarily grow them together, but also separately? What a great question. <laughs> you know, these girls, aren't they the I best? I do. They are fantastic. These are I some know. of the best questions I have had. Of course. They're amazing women. <laughs> they are. I usually use the illustration of a plate for this. And the, the plate is one that we have at Thanksgiving that has the little partitions in it so that your food doesn't touch. I like those plates because I don't like my food to touch. I'm one of those people. I know. I know down here what happens. I get that. But up here, I want to enjoy it the way it was intended, right? That's where, that's what I'm focused on. Those little, those plates with the walls, I love. There is an idea that we inherited from the ancient Greeks that we can compartmental our lives just like those plates are compartmentalized. And that what happens in this part of our life doesn't affect what happens in this part or what happens in this part. And what happens at work really doesn't affect what happens at home and vice versa. That's a cute myth, but it's just that. <laughs> it's not true. The reason I talk about personal and professional leadership in the same paragraph sometimes is because I believe they're connected. I believe to be a person of integrity means every part of your life is integrated with each other. Every part touches every other part. Who you are at work and who you are at home and who you are on the ball field and who you are when you're on the beach and who you are when you're playing pickleball. All of these, all of these yous, they're the same you. Yes. They're the same you. So being a person or a leader of integrity means that it's the same you all the way around. Yes. What you develop in one area is going to bleed over and affect every other area. So if you develop one area of your leadership, guess what? It's going to touch everything else. I always say that who I am when no one's looking needs to be the same as who I am when everyone's looking. So true. <laughs> because if not, it will come out. Right. It always does. Let's talk about your book a little bit and some of what are some of the key components that you put in there that are giving that best advice that you bring your your best tips. Hmm. You know, the first one, the first chapter is the, the one we've already talked about, and that's the intentional cultivation of a teachable spirit. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to get that right. It doesn't matter what else you apply uh, if you don't get that one right, uh, because that's the non-negotiable. If you walk into every day making that decision, and this is a decision I make every morning. I'm going to choose this for the day. I'm going to pre-decide before I'm in the moment. And that's important. I'm going to pre-decide. I want to be teachable. I want to learn. I'm going to place myself in that posture today. That's a choice. It's a decision. And I would challenge every one of you to make it. That's one piece. Another key that I believe makes your leadership catalytic is learning your own wiring. We've touched on this a little bit about how you are wired, how you're designed. This is personality types, right? Uh, we, we talk about how, you know, there's introverts, there's extroverts, there's, there's so many different personality types. I use the DISC profile with a lot of my coaching clients. Mm -hmm. And the DISC profile is great because it helps to, to clarify what are some of your strengths? What are some of your weaknesses? What are areas where you need to be mindful? What are your blind spots? The problem with a blind spot is you can't see yours. Other people can, <laughs> but you can't see your own. Um, that's why I have found it so helpful for so many years to have a coach who helps me see what I can't see. Mm -hmm. You can't see the whole picture when you're in the frame. And I need somebody outside who's going to ask me questions that nobody else in my world is going to ask me and who's going to hold me accountable to what I say I want and to what I say I'm going to do. That's the value of that person in my life. Discovering your wiring means that you are learning that for yourself. You're learning and increasing your self-awareness and your emotional intelligence around how you are wired. That means you're not going to pretend to be something that you're not. I'm not going to be an introvert pretending to be an extrovert because I think that's what's going to make me more successful. It's not. It's just going to make you less authentic. You have to understand how you're wired. Discovering your wiring is key to, to truly making your leadership catalytic. But it doesn't stop there. Learning the wiring of people who work for you, your direct reports, the people that you get to lead. Like if you discover their wiring, guess what? That means you know how to lead them better. You know what their hopes, their dreams are so that you can equip them and empower them and invest in them to help them get there. Because guess what? They probably don't want to stay in the role they're in for the next 50 years. They might have hopes and dreams beyond that. 
Shocker. <laughs> what if you as their leader chose to know what those were and ask and say, hey, how can I help you get there? Right. That's being catalytic. But it starts with discovering your wiring. You can't take anybody else where you haven't been. You discover your own wiring first, then you discover theirs, and then you lean into that. Wow. Awesome. Thank you. Capri, any last questions you have? Oh, I have plenty more. You always, <laughs> you always know I've got more questions. So in addition to your book, what are some other great books that you would recommend to young adults or teenagers who are looking to expand their knowledge on leadership? Mm. That's a great question. I'm sure you've read plenty. <laughs> Well, you can see I have a little bit of a book problem here. <laughs> a little one. <laughs> a little one. Hey, I should say smile. <laughs> it's only a problem if you know. Yeah. Uh, so there's there's a couple that I'll give you. Um, one, I, I think I think learning to ask the right questions is a leadership skill that we don't talk about enough. There's a great book called Great Leaders Ask Good Questions. It's by John Maxwell. Fantastic, fantastic read. Uh, and it helps you to develop the skill of asking the right questions. That's one. Uh, a second one I would recommend would be the book Soundtracks by John Acuff. Uh, Soundtracks is not a, not a typical leadership book, but it's one I think I've recommended to every one of my coaching clients at different points in their journey because it's so practical. His, his premise is that every one of us, just like in a movie, a movie has a soundtrack and the soundtrack really makes the movie. I mean, you can't imagine Indiana Jones without the soundtrack, right? Well, in the same way, you have a soundtrack in your head. You have thoughts, things that you say to yourself over and over and over and over again until they become the music of your life. And you choose those soundtracks. And so often we have broken soundtracks in our heads. Things that we say to ourselves that if we said them to somebody else, uh, that would not be helpful. As my counselor told me one time, if you talk to other people the way you talk to yourself, you would have no friends. <laughs> she was spot on. Uh, sure. So often the soundtracks in our heads are broken. And we say things to ourselves that are not helpful, that are not true, that are not kind. And, and we have to learn to replace those soundtracks. That is a leadership skill that I find incredibly helpful because then we're able to help other people with their soundtracks that we lead. So that's one highly recommend soundtracks. And the third one I just read recently, but it's, it's going on the list because I, I found it so incredibly helpful. It's Atomic Habits by James Clear. I love that book. <laughs> isn't, that, isn't it fantastic? I'd never that, read it. Yeah. It's incredible. Oh, so good. So good. And I feel like it's a really like, it's easy to digest. Too. like the way that it's written because I feel like a lot of times like I'm like oh this is a non-fiction book this could be really scary but it's broken down into really easy to understand terms absolutely my my younger daughter my the 10th grader uh, she is currently reading it nice um, we have a, a thing that I picked up actually from from John Maxwell that, that his dad did with him and I said I'm adopting that I did it with both of our girls if you read a book that I choose um, that's five dollars you know <laughs> And uh, and so Atomic Habits, that's a five dollar book. Uh, <laughs> I'd make I think, that one a ten dollar book. Girls want to get on his list. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> I'll give you a list. Send <laughs> over your Venmo. <laughs> that's right. I'm down. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> Dr. Williams book giveaway uh, payment list. Yes. <laughs> I'll start selling some of these books to fund that. Huh? <laughs> Excellent questions today. Um, Capri McKenna, you have any last thoughts or anything for Dr. William? They're both ready to be leaders. I know both of you are already leaders. You've already exhibited that the times I've known you, but I see these girls really even going that next level. And I think you gave such incredible insights today to not only help them, myself, but all of our listeners and our viewers. So mm. thank you so much for taking the time to be with us today and provide such incredible insight. We'll make sure your website is in all the comments in this show, wherever you consume this podcast, wherever you listen or watch, the links are gonna be there so you can get his book and have more information and Thank you so much for being a part of the Education Career and Beyond podcast today. Thank you so much for having me. It's just been a joy. I've thoroughly enjoyed talking to all of you.
Awesome. Well, we loved having you. So thank you so much for coming on. Thank you.